Hello, welcome. Structure of larynx is beautifully complex. It is made up of many components. Learning each and every component in detail helps to understand its structure and function in a better way. In this part, let's begin to learn the cartilages, membranes and how the interior of larynx looks. Larynx makes firm palpable projection in front of the neck in midline. This is well known as Adam's apple. In its function, it is a protector for lo lower respiratory system. Yes, it doesn't allow any liquids or solids into respiratory system. We understand it by our own experience. If any of these touch the upper respiratory system, larynx produces a protective cough reflex. Indeed, larynx functions like a watchdog for lower respiratory system. Production of voice or phonation is acquired biological function of larynx. This function is next to protection. The learning objectives for this session are Enumerate the structural constituents of larynx. Explain the structural details of laryngeal cartilages. Describe the membranes of larynx. Outline the internal features of laryngeal cavity. And enlist the sensory innervation and vascular supply of laryngeal cavity. I am just enumerating the structural constituents of larynx. Larynx is made up of cartilages and membranes. Cartilages are of two types, unpaired and paired. Membranes are of two types, extrinsic and intrinsic. Among cartilages, unpaired variety are thyroid, cricoid and epiglottis. These are the bigger cartilages compared to paired ones. The paired cartilages are arytenoid, corniculate and cuneiform. Among membranes, extrinsic membranes are seen from outside. They are thyrohyoid, cricothyroid and cricotracheal membrane. Intrinsic membranes are two, quadrate membrane, and conus elasticus. Here we have just enumerated the structural components. We are looking at all these in detail in a while. The structural details of laryngeal cartilages. Among the unpaired cartilages, we find thyroid, cricoid, and epiglottis. These are bigger in size. Paired cartilages are smaller arytenoid, corniculate and cuneiform. Major mass of cartilages of larynx are of hyaline variety. They are shown in blue color, thyroid and cricoid and base of the arytenoid is of hyaline variety. But the apex of the arytenoid along with epiglottis, corniculate and cuneiform cartilages are of elastic variety. Thyroid is the largest cartilage among the larynx. The meaning of thyroid is shield. It is like a shield which protects the internal membranes of the larynx. This is the enlarged view of the same. This is lamina of thyroid cartilage. It has two laminae, left laminae and right laminae. They are meeting with an angle in the midline. Posteriorly, each laminae show upper and lower projections called horns or cornu, superior and inferior horns. Inferior horn makes joint with cricoid cartilage, which is seen here. There is a notch in the midline in the upper part. So this is thyroid notch. Let us look at this cartilage from 
anterior and posterior view this picture shows anterior view this is superior thyroid notch and this is posterior view both laminae meet in the midline with an angle that is nearly 90 degree in case of males and more in case of female that is the reason why it makes adam's apple more prominent in case of male this is also a reason for roughness of voice in case of males cricoid cartilage is just below the thyroid cartilage unlike thyroid cartilage cricoid cartilage completely encircles the tube of larynx in the form of ring the meaning of cricoid cartilage is ring like cartilage it is having shape of signet ring in appearance this is the enlarged view of cricoid cartilage from the side it has anteriorly an arch and posteriorly lamina this is anterior view we can see the anterior arch here and this is posterior lamina seen from front this is posterior view we can see lamina i usually tell cricoid cartilage appears as if a person is sitting cross legged without having shoulders and head at these sites where shoulders meet it is having articular surfaces for arytenoid cartilages on either sides of the midline and at the side of the lamina it has articulation for inferior cornu of thyroid cartilage the cricothyroid joint on either sides they act simultaneously the action of joint is in the form of rocking movement the axis is transverse axis when the anterior arch is lifted up the posterior part the lamina goes behind when arch is descended down the lamina comes forward epiglottis it is hidden inside behind the lamina of thyroid cartilage this is in the form of leaf this is complete structure of epiglottis this is upper end this is lower end lower end is tapering which is attached to the inner surface of thyroid laminae where they meet in the midline this is the anteroposterior weave of the epiglottis it is most flexible cartilage among the larynx and it is made up of elastic variety on either side of the epiglottis we find borders arytenoid cartilage is hidden behind the lamina of thyroid cartilage it is making articulation with the lamina of cricoid cartilage on its upper border on either sides to see that we have to take sagittal section through the larynx this is after taking sagittal section we can see anterior arch of the cricoid cut here posterior lamina of the cricoid cut here anterior junction of both laminae of thyroid cut here and this is epiglottis cut in midline we can observe on right side of the arch the right arytenoid is articulating with the cricoid let us enlarge this arytenoid cartilage this is in the shape of pyramid it has apex and base very near to the apex we find corniculate and cuneiform cartilages they are very tiny difficult to demonstrate it has apex it has vocal process we can see here anteriorly towards the lamina of thyroid cartilage it it is projecting like a cone this is vocal process this is holding vocal ligament at its tip other process which is behind this one is muscular process which takes insertion of some muscles of larynx to look at its companion this is how they look this is lateral surface of the left arytenoid this is medial surface of the right arytenoid this picture shows both arytenoid sitting 
on the upper part of the lamina of cricoid cartilage seen from front. We can see vocal processes here, muscular process here and here. These are the apex of arytenoid with corniculate and cuneiform cartilages. Actually, corniculate and cuneiform cartilages become content of a fold which runs between arytenoid and border of epiglottis. That is, aryepiglottic fold. Apex of the arytenoid, corniculate and cuneiform are elastic in variety along with epiglottis. Membranes of larynx are of two variety, extrinsic and intrinsic. Extrinsic membranes are seen outside. They are thyrohyoid, cricothyroid and cricotracheal. The names are suggesting they are between what structures. Thyrohyoid membrane is here which is between upper border of the thyroid cartilage and hyoid bone. Cricothyroid membrane is here. It is between thyroid and cricoid cartilages. It is blending with conus elasticus inside. In the midline, cricothyroid membrane makes a strong band that is known as cricothyroid ligament. Cricotracheal membrane is the one which is between lower border of the cricoid cartilage and upper border of the first string of trachea. Others are intrinsic membranes. They are of two variety, quadrate and conus elasticus. Quadrate membrane is quadrangular in shape. Conus elasticus is in the form of cone and is elastic. Let us look at details of these two membranes. Conus elasticus is cone shaped and elastic membrane, which is intrinsic membrane of larynx which is hidden behind the lamina of thyroid cartilage. Let us take mid sagittal section through the larynx. This will be the weave. We are observing right sided arytenoid cartilage with vocal process and vocal ligament which is, which is attached to the tip of the vocal process to the posterior part of the lamina of thyroid cartilage. This is cricoid cartilage right half. This is upper border of cricoid cartilage, arch continuing into lamina. The upper border of cricoid cartilage here, this will be the attachment for conus elasticus. Let us look at it in other picture. So this is superior weave of thyroid cartilage and cricoid cartilage and arytenoid cartilages here. So this is upper border of cricoid cartilage on the right side and left side. You can see conus elasticus is attached here on the upper border of cricoid cartilage. It is extending upward and inside to the lamina of thyroid cartilage and its upper border is free and posteriorly it is attaching on the vocal process Anteriorly, it is attaching on the inner surface of the laminae of thyroid cartilage in the midline. So, this upper free border of conus elasticus is vocal ligament. Here, cricothyroid membrane is seen. This is extrinsic membrane. Inside to this membrane, conus elasticus runs. In the midline, anteriorly, we can see here cricothyroid ligament which is thickened part of cricothyroid membrane. This is being elastic. Whenever our lamina of the cricoid goes back, it gives some tension in these folds. Whenever lamina of the cricoid moves forward along with arytenoid, it gives some relaxation in this fold. So, ochal ligament is upper free border of conus elasticus. I add one more sentence here. Vocal fold is vocal ligament covered by mucous membrane. You will understand it better as we move forward. Quadrate membrane. As the name suggests, this is quadrangular. 
indeed it is trapezium in shape this is mid sagittal section of larynx we are seeing right half of the cricoid right half of the half of the thyroid and right half of the epiglottis this is right arytenoid cartilage with occal ligament if i have to draw quadrate membrane here on this picture this it is it has two free borders and two attached borders posteriorly it is attached to the apex of arytenoid anteriorly it is attached to the border of epiglottis superiorly it is free and inferiorly it is free there are two such membranes this is of right side and one will be on the left side if you look at the same membrane in another diagram in superior view this it is this is thyroid cartilage these are arytenoids on lamina of the cricoid so we are also seeing conus elasticus here vocal ligament we can see quadrangular membrane here this is posterior attached margin to arytenoid anterior attached margin to the left border of the epiglottis superior border is free and inferior border is free these free borders are named between arytenoid to epiglottis as array epiglottic fold which is here a epiglottic fold is upper free border of quadrate membrane covered by mucous membrane in the same fold we find corniculate and cuneiform cartilages in the posterior part very near to arytenoid the lower free border is vestibular fold we shall see these three folds a epiglottic fold vestibular fold and vocal folds how they appear after covering of mucous membrane inside the laryngeal cavity this is sagittal section of laryngeal cartilages all unpaired cartilages are cut in midline epiglottis thyroid and cricoid and paired cartilages of right side are seen here arytenoid corniculate and cuneiform i will be constructing membranes on this this is quadrate membrane which has upper free border and lower free border this is conus elasticus which has upper free border all these membranes and interior of the larynx covered by mucous membrane mucous membrane is epithelium with underlying connective tissue laryngeal epithelium is respiratory variety it is pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium when we place that sheet of epithelium on these membranes on the inner surface of the larynx it will appear like this here we can see array epiglottic fold which is upper free border of quadrate membrane on the posterior part of it we will see corniculate and cuneiform cartilages this is vestibular fold which is lower free border of quadrate membrane this is vocal fold formed by the upper free border of conus elasticus when these ligaments which are free borders of the membranes are covered by mucous membrane they are called folds this is realistic picture of laryngeal cavity here we see array epiglottic fold here is vestibular fold and this is vocal fold there is a gap between vestibular fold and vocal fold we call it ventricle of larynx ventricle of larynx pour some serous secretions into laryngeal cavity this is because the vestibular fold and vocal fold these are lined with stratified squamous non keratinized epithelium that is friction epithelium to keep these folds moist 
there is a secretion from ventricle the ventricle extends much more deep to quadrate membrane medial to thyroid cartilage here ventricle extends i am drawing a outline like this behind the quadrate membrane medial to thyroid cartilage so this is called sinus of larynx or oil tank of larynx this pours serous secretions into the ventricle which keeps these folds moist not only on these folds anterior surface of the epiglottis and upper half of the posterior surface of the epiglottis are lined with stratified squamous epithelium this is laryngeal inlet seen from behind this is a epiglottic fold of right side this is of left side this is laryngeal inlet lateral to the epiglottic fold we find piriform fossa this is a view from laryngopharynx into the inlet of larynx let us take section behind the epiglottis coronally into the laryngeal cavity that will appear like this these are the cricoid cartilages these two are the lamina of thyroid cartilage so we are seeing it in three different colors central one between the vestibular folds and vocal folds this area is called glottic area this is supraglottic and this is infraglottic these are divided like this for convenience so vestibule of the larynx is supraglottic part above the vestibular folds ventricle of the larynx is glottic part that is between the vestibular and vocal folds infraglottic or subglottic part of the larynx is below the vocal fold till the lower border of cricoid cartilage rima vestibule is the space between right and left vestibular folds which is here rima glottidis is space between right and left vocal folds which are here any growths in laryngeal cavity near to the glottic area will be diagnosed early because they will change the voice of the person this will explain the neurovascular supply to the interior of larynx above the vocal folds the sensory nerve supply is internal laryngeal nerve below the vocal folds it is recurrent laryngeal nerve both these nerves overlap in glottic area near the vocal fold blood supply above the vocal fold is superior laryngeal artery which is branch of superior thyroid artery and below the vocal fold it is inferior laryngeal artery which is branch of inferior thyroid artery veins are also correspondingly superior and inferior laryngeal veins lymphatic drainage above the vocal fold is into upper deep cervical lymph nodes and below the vocal folds it is into lower deep cervical the level of vocal fold acts like a watershed line internal laryngeal nerve and superior laryngeal artery are here recurrent laryngeal nerve or inferior laryngeal nerve and inferior laryngeal artery are here to mention few applied aspects laryngomalacia is genetical condition where larynx is not well formed it's also known as membranous larynx loss of sensation on the inner surface of the laryngeal cavity can happen when superior laryngeal nerve or recurrent laryngeal nerves are damaged during thyroid surgeries this seriously affects the cough reflex which is protective cancerous growths are common on the inner surface of the laryngeal cavity they are classified supraglottic glottic or infraglottic according to the region where they develop the glottic cancers are the one which are diagnosed quickly because they affect the voice of the person this ends the session on cartilages membranes and interior of larynx have a good time